What is going on everyone? Shiva Safkada here with another Tesla video. Today we are going to be talking about this CarPlay box that we reviewed about a week ago and showed you everything that you need to know. This is the best CarPlay device that we have reviewed thus far with so many new features and this is seamless. It connects really quickly. It connects automatically. Having said that, there are some issues that have been reported with this box, and that is just a normal process sometime with Tesla's update, this box has its own server. So with all of that, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to do all the questions and answers that I have received on the first video. I'm gonna talk about some of the issues that have been reported by you all and the company, and then I'm gonna talk about the solutions. We're gonna go one item at a time and then i'm going to state the problem that people are having i'm going to answer the question if i know the answer or if i got a response from the company so i'm going to discuss all of that and hopefully hopefully this device continues to work for you after this video so you can do some of your troubleshooting and there's still some issues that the manufacturer is working on trying to fix as soon as possible so they should be sending that update but i'm going to show you today how to do the update how to change some of the settings and maybe it will fix the issues that you're having so one of the most common problem that has been reported by you viewers to me is that when you go to the Wi-Fi searching here, you don't find this. So as you see here, you don't find it. Of course, we haven't plugged in ours. So what you need to do is a couple of solutions that, you know, I was talking with the company is one thing. First of all, you need to make sure that your phone's Bluetooth is connected to this device before you connect to the car's Wi-Fi. So that is the step number one is make sure you power this on, connect your phone's Bluetooth to this device, and then go to Tesla and connect this to the Wi-Fi. As you see here, ours automatically connected because we had connected in the past and even though we just powered it on, it automatically connected. So it should work like that, but there could be some issues sometime that it doesn't connect the first time because maybe it is not getting the Bluetooth signal from this to this device and then that's why it is saying you know wi-fi cannot be found or some errors that you might be getting so just make sure the bluetooth is connected from here to here and then connect to the wi-fi and it should work in our case as you see we had unplugged it and now it is automatically connected our phone is connected to carplay because we had previously paired it and now if i go to the browser the carplay should be here so it says the phone is waiting to be connected there you go so the carplay is connected also, you need to make sure your phone's Bluetooth is on and then your Wi-Fi is on. So you want to make sure that both of those settings are on by going to the setting because sometimes if you had turned off your Bluetooth inside or if the, your Bluetooth is being used by something else inside and you go to the car and it doesn't pop up, the Wi-Fi sign doesn't pop up or this device is not working, it could be the reason that your Bluetooth setting is not turned on. So just ensure that that is the case. I just leave mine on all the time. So when I walk into the car, this automatically connects to the CarPlay. Another possible reason why you might be having the issue of the Wi-Fi not popping up is that the power cable. Sometimes Teslas do not provide that sufficient power that is required for devices like this. You might have shared devices and what you can do is find a more of a heavy duty USB-C cable like this. So this is a very common cable. You probably have one sitting around somewhere in your garage. Uh, if not, you know, Amazon is really cheap if you want to order that, but a heavier, heavier cable like this, because this is a much thicker cable and I have been connecting with this and I haven't had any issues. So just try changing the power cable and that might also solve your problem. Again, all of these are just hypotheses based on what we have tested here and the manufacturer is looking for a solution if it is a software issue or whatnot. But all of these things that I just mentioned seem to solve most of the problem. So one of the things that uh, seems to be a confusion with this is that when it is in link here, where it says link, when you go to zbox.link, your casting is not going to be possible. So if you go over here, you're not going to see the screen mirroring feature and vice versa. And that's just how this de device works. It can only do one thing at a time. So if you put this in cast, then when you go back over here and look for the casting, it will come up right here and it will start casting the phone. But your CarPlay does not work meanwhile because it is using different things to connect. Casting works through Wi-Fi and then the CarPlay works through Bluetooth. So that is why you have a iPhone cast now. There's nothing, you, you can't touch anything here. And that seems to freak out a lot of people is how do I go back to CarPlay because I can't just slide it here. And for that, 
what you have to do is you have to go to your phone and you have to do stop mirroring and it will not automatically connect to CarPlay. As you see right here, the phone is waiting to be connected and that's just because you have to hit this link. So when you hit on this link button, that's when the CarPlay is gonna start working. So there you go. So the CarPlay is here and that is because it is, it, it went back to the CarPlay from casting and it was very quick, it was very seamless as you just saw demonstrated here, but it will not work one setting or the other. So you can't be on a cast and expect the CarPlay to automatically work. You have to switch it back to the link here versus when it is in link, the cast is not gonna work. You have to press cast here manually and then go switch between those. So if you're in cast and then your phone is not connecting CarPlay, that's your issue. You need to be in link for CarPlay cast for cast. So I want to show you how you can run a software update that might also fix some of the glitches that you might be having. You want to make sure that the device is connected to Tesla. So TSL 91A5 is connected to Tesla's Wi-Fi. You also want to go to your phone and connect to that right here. So it will connect, the, the Wi-Fi will connect the same Wi-Fi. So your Tesla as well as your phone is connected to the same Wi-Fi. Then you need to go to your phone's browser and type 3.3.3.3, so four three, so dot in between and then four threes and then hit go. And you will see the current firmware version. So this is my current firmware version. And what I can do is I can hit check for update. And when I do that, this is checking for the update on this box and then it will update it. You just have to make sure that your phone has data, which I do LTE right now, and that's the only way it will check for update. So it'll check for update, and if there is a new update available, that is when it will show that the new update is available, then you can hit run and then get the update done. So that might be your uh, the glitch that is causing my update. And that's how the manufacturer is gonna continuously push new update to you is through this interface. You connect to the Wi-Fi in the car, you connect the Wi-Fi in the Tesla, you check for update by going to this 3.3.3.3 and there you have it, the update. So anytime you have issues and you want to reach out to the manufacturer, they can push an update like this, software patches. So if Tesla does a software update and this device breaks, this is how you are going to get the patches so that you can continuously use this device in the future. So another common question that I get, and people think this is an issue, which it is an issue, but it's just the design, right? It's just the design of this uh, device, and I don't think it is gonna get fixed with software update in the future, is that when this is connected to the Wi-Fi of the Tesla, so here it is connected, TSL 91A5, you can't use the Tesla's native apps. So you can go and use the, the navigation, you can see the supercharging map, you can do all of that. But what you can't do is, let's say, the traffic map, because that requires internet from the either the 4G that you have with the Tesla through premium connectivity, or you know the satellite map. That does not work either because it requires internet. And what happens is, as soon as this device connects here with the 2.4G network here uh, with Tesla, it is using your phone's data to connect uh, with within Tesla with this so that it, it is projecting your phone through your phone's network to this, to the Tesla's browser. And it only works for that purpose. So only in the Tesla's browser, you can get the CarPlay and everything. But if you try to type in something else in the browser, it's not going to work. It does not provide the internet. So that is a downside of this. And I guess we can't have it all. So unless Tesla have natively integrated a CarPlay on their system, we got to work with whatever workaround we can find. And unfortunately, that is the case here. And that is pretty common with other display, dis devices like this, uh, which does not require a 4G SIM card. If it requires a 4G SIM card, it can act as a hotspot. So that might solve your problem. Now, there are a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can go to the browser here. And if you need to use something like a voice command, if I try to do that with Tesla here, the voice command does not work because there is no internet and it will just keep forever. It says connection error, try again, because it does not have a data here. It's only using the CarPlay. One thing you can do is you can just press and hold right here and the Siri activate. So you can also ask Siri to play music. Uh, you can ask Siri to navigate to different things. So you can fully interact here. You can also activate Hey Siri on your phone and it will do that for you. You can also press and hold on your power button. So there's different ways of activating Siri to do that for voice command purposes. And you get all the navigation, the traffic data using Waze and everything. So 
just think of it, this as a solution where it is CarPlay that is working. So it is full, full fledged CarPlay here, but you can't use Tesla's native devices like, like, you know, apps like the theater or any of this native, like Apple music does not work. Spotify does not work, but you can get Apple music and Spotify in CarPlay working directly here on Tesla, just, just not on the Tesla's native side. Now, not ideal. But what you can also do is get a cable like this that has a switch in the middle where you can turn the power and data on and off so that you can plug this in right here in the USB. This plugs on the USB A and you got a little switch. So what you can do is if you need to use Tesla system temporarily, you can just turn this off and then use the Tesla's Wi-Fi because as soon as you turn this off, the power will go out on this device here. Then it, it will not work. That means you are free to use your Tesla system. So all the internet is restored as soon as you turn the power off here with using this switch. When you turn it back on, as you saw, it seamlessly connects with this device uh, as demonstrated by plugging this um, in and out. So it works really quickly. So that is in your benefit that this device is awesome. It, it seamlessly connects between the cast and the CarPlay and it connects really quickly. But Unfortunately, just a, a workaround is to do this, to use your, your car's data. If you need to use your car's data, if you want to use your Tesla's voice command, if you want to use other stuff that is in your Tesla, like TuneIn or something temporarily, will you still want the CarPlay is turn it off, CarPlay goes out, you use whatever you need to use, then turn it back on when you want to use the CarPlay again. Another issue that people have reported to me is that you you leave this plugged in. Of course, that is what how you wanted this to work is you, you set it, forget it. You go inside the house and your car place is still connected on your phone. That means anything that you play or make a phone call is not going to your phone. It is coming as a car play on the car. But then you shut down the car and you went inside. What happens is sometimes there is still some residual power uh, that the 12 volt battery is active to maintain things like uh, the, the software within the Tesla or the sentry mode, things like that, so that your USB port might still be powered on by Tesla. As soon as your USB ports are powered on, this device is going to wake up. So you might have that issue for a short duration. So it only works up to five meter, which is what, 16 feet. So up to 16 feet, you might still be connected to this device, unfortunately. So if you park in the garage and then you go within 16 feet inside your house, you might still have a CarPlay connected to this. Now a workaround to that again is a system like this where you can have a little switch and you what you do is right before leaving the car, you can turn this off. Then that way you know for sure your phone is not going to be connected to the CarPlay while you are inside the house, while the car is parked outside. And then when you enter the car, you can just turn this back on. Then you have the connection. That might actually be better because that would also solve some of the issues that you might be having is you're not seeing the Wi-Fi sign here when you when you turn on the car and then, and then start driving. Sometimes it, it doesn't pick up. So if you turn it off and on manually, it is likely going to pick up super quickly. Just need to make sure one thing again with that Wi-Fi is that your home's Wi-Fi is not competing. If your home's Wi-Fi is competing with this, then um, the, the CarPlay might not work. So as soon as you move away from your home and your home's Wi-Fi is no longer in reach, then this Wi-Fi should be picked up by the car. So I ordered this little switch that I talked about earlier. And unfortunately, in my case, this is not working. It is not powering. In theory, this should work but this particular one is either defective or it is just not compatible. So I have ordered a few other ones and I'm gonna be testing them and then I will put a link down below for the ones that work for me if you are interested. At the same time, if you have used something like this in the past, um, because I think I saw some comments, um, Rick, it might be you who have commented that you had a little switch uh, that you wanted to turn on, on and off and work for the car link kit. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, please dropping that in the link down below in the comment section. I would greatly appreciate it. Or anyone else watching this video, if you have used something like this, please drop that link in the comment section and I'll put that in my description so that everybody can take advantage of this device. Now, another thing that has been reported is the lag in Waze or other applications. So it is not picking up with your phone's speed. Couple of things that could be causing this is one, of course, there is some lag in this. This is not a perfect solution uh, because it's not a native app. 
it's through a browser. So if you can imagine, my phone is hitting up to this device, this CarPlay device, then that device is hitting up to a browser on a car. So there is going to be some delay and it is only going to be as good as your phone's GPS capability. So if you have an older phone, you're probably going to have some lag. So that's just, that's just normal, right? Like that, that will happen. But for this device to be useful, we also don't want it to be too laggy that it doesn't, it becomes useless, right? So a couple of things that I would recommend is I noticed that when I am making a turn on Waze, especially on an older phone, so this is iPhone 7 Plus, it takes a second to recognize that I made that turn. When I'm on a straight line or I'm going on a curve and whatnot, it works. But when I'm making that 90 degree turn is when it lags a little bit. I didn't notice that. A couple of things that I would recommend. One is manufacturer is looking for a solution. Hopefully they can figure out a way to speed this up, but probably it has to do something with your phone and again, the browser solution. So keep that in mind. They are looking for a solution so that there is no lag. They wanna to try to make it as perfect as possible. This is not a perfect system, but they'll try their best to make that. And they, they give me that assurance. Another thing you can try is sometime, sometime you can have lag is if you think of this as a computer, Tesla is a computer on wheels. So sometime what you need to do is you need to clear your cache. And to do that, you can go over here, you can go to service and right here it says clear browser data. So when you clear the browser data, what happens is it, it clears everything that is saved and hopefully it helps with the lag. So what we're gonna do today, we can exclude the bookmarks um, or we can exclude the history, whatever you wanna do, then you can clear the cache. You can also clear everything. This is like going to a Google Chrome and clearing your cache and everything. So I can clear the data and it says clearing browser data. It clears successfully. Now, if I go over here on browser, it, it is loading up like a new system. So it cleared everything and maybe, just maybe it will help you. So if we go to my bookmarks here, uh, zbox.link, it should pop up the CarPlay and hopefully it has done its job so that it's not laggy. So we'll, we'll test here in just a second, but that should also alleviate some of the issues that you're having. Sometime clearing your cache, clearing your browser is a great solution. Not just for a car, but also a computer, also your phone. So I highly recommend doing that every now and then. So what we're gonna test is I have this phone. This is iPhone 13 Pro Max, Waze running here. And then this is Waze running on the CarPlay device with an iPhone 7 Plus. So just keep this in mind that this CarPlay is iPhone 7 Plus, older phone. This is 13 Pro Max. I wanted to show you the side-by-side -side comparison because some of you reported that the Waze is laggy on the CarPlay device, but just keep in mind, Waze is sometimes laggy on the phone too, just because it is using the GPS here, it's a large application. So I wanted to demonstrate how it compared. This is a different phone, it is not connected to the CarPlay here. This older phone is connected to the CarPlay with Waze. So let's go on a drive and I'll show you the, the lag and then show you the comparison between these two. So let's do that. I'm gonna start driving and uh, it should start moving so that little GPS location is moving now and it is trying to readjust. So far, it's exactly the same. The phone and the CarPlay device is doing the exact same thing. So now I'm gonna make a turn here and let's see the difference. So making a turn. So that one was a little faster at turning but not too bad with this one. And just keep in mind again, this is iPhone 7 Plus, an older phone, and this is 13 Pro Max. And in my opinion, when I'm looking at this, they're doing the same thing. So we're gonna try it one more time at the turn here. But in my opinion, I think they are exactly the same, even though this is an older phone connected to Waze here. You are going to have a little bit of lag on Waze regardless of if you have in your phone or a CarPlay device whatever you do. So right here in the turn, this is going to be a little bit faster because it's a newer phone. This one caught up pretty quickly and this is going through a browser. So given all the circumstances we're in, I would say this is pretty good and I don't think it can get any better with software update going forward. So I'm gonna try to make a left here. Uh, this is not the route. And then let's see how quickly it reroutes on both. Yeah did a pretty good job. Again, you are going to see a slight lag here because it's not directly showing on the phone. This is going from an iPhone 7 Plus 
to this device. But hey, look, comparison wise, I'm pretty impressed. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But is it great? That works for what we need it for? Yeah, I think so, because it is pretty much matching what a phone would show you if you put your phone on the mount. So in a straight road, I think it is caught up with this, but on a turn, it is probably like a couple millisecond difference when it is turning, or maybe it's like one second difference when it is turning. As you look at it, 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 it is rerouting pretty quickly. It, it catches up. So this is just standalone phone. This is Waze with the CarPlay with iPhone 7 Plus, and I don't see much difference, and maybe I'm blind, but <laughs> this this looks pretty good to me. And what I found is somehow in maps, like the Apple Maps, it is a lot faster than Waze. So it doesn't lag as much on the Apple Map here as it is pretty much real time, the navigation is screen, but in the Waze, it, it, it lags a little bit. So if I'm trying to make a right turn here, that little navigation device um, updates rather quickly. So right now, yeah. So like, as you saw, it is super fast with Apple Map, I think just with Waze because the application size is a little larger and I'm using a little bit of an older phone so maybe that is why but I did find that the Apple map is a lot more responsive than Waze um, so hopefully they can continuously improve this so that Waze becomes as responsive as Apple map but look at the Apple map I mean there is hardly even any lag it is moving along with the car so I talked a lot today and normally I do a lot of demos, but that's the point of Q&A is to answer all of your questions. Hopefully this helps you with your situation if you are having those issues. So just to recap, if the Wi-Fi doesn't show up here, what you can do is make sure that your phone is connected to the Bluetooth with this device first and then connect to Wi-Fi. Second solution is to get a heavy duty cable. Third solution, if you wanna try it out, is get something like this where you have a switch so that you can turn on, on, on and off easily. You can also try clearing your browser and then the software update. So we showed you how to do the software update by connecting here to the Wi-Fi, connecting to your phone. So that should hopefully alleviate some of the issues that you're having where the Wi-Fi drops out after a couple of seconds here. I, I have been connected to this here for a long time while I'm sitting here doing this video and it hasn't dropped. So mine is working well. So mine probably has that stable version and I have probably done everything that I just said as solution. So try, try those solutions and let me know if it works or not but the manufacturer is also testing it. They have got a bunch of cables and they're testing with different cables, different software version, Tesla's different software. They're also testing with phones, different software, and also trying with the, the, the Z, Z boxes software as well. So they are also doing their due diligence. Meanwhile, they just wanted me to let you all know that they're working on it. And once the solution is figured out, they will reach out to individual owners who have purchased this device and let them know what software is out there. But if you want to try it meanwhile, everybody has access to this video. Please give those solutions a try and it might help you out. So for all the comments about how you can't use the internet or the voice command of the Tesla, as I demonstrated earlier, an alternative solution is to press and hold here so that you activate Siri and then you can ask Siri to do things here in the CarPlay. You have a CarPlay here, so you got pretty much everything that the Tesla has. Of course, you don't get some of this app here, but it does work by doing that. And if you want to temporarily be able to use it and super easily is to get something like this where there is a switch and you can turn off this device use the Tesla's functionality, turn this back on. But to reiterate the point, Tesla's navigation is still works. Whatever we want to do, like I can put this here and the navigation system works. It will navigate me to supercharger. So it does all of that without any issues. It's just that you don't get the live traffic data or satellite data. And then also you are able to access your Tesla using your phone. So that feature does not go away. It is just temporarily deactivate and activate and use some of the Tesla's native app here. And also recapping that the device does has a five meter, which is about 16 foot of range, even after you walk into your house. So if you don't want to have that issue, you can get a switch like this so that you can turn it off before leaving and then turn it back on after coming. Again, not ideal solutions with any of this, but this is the best 
solution that I have found for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and iPhone casting seamlessly to get it on a Tesla's main screen here. If you want other solutions, we have reviewed a lot of instrument clusters in the front that has Apple CarPlay. There's a lot more coming, but if you don't want to have to install all of that and an easy solution, this works. Definitely not perfect. As I say in all of my videos, none of the product that we review here are perfect. There's always something that we want more. And uh, this is, again, by far the best one, not perfect. All right, that'll do it for today's video. Hopefully you found this video helpful. As I said, I will continuously update you on any information that I get from TMA. But meanwhile, please do let me know if you found any other solution that worked for your case and share with other people in the comment section so that everybody could benefit from the information. My goal always here in this channel is to give you as much information as possible so you can make your decision, help you troubleshoot any of these accessories that we review and constantly put pressure on the manufacturer so that they can come up with a solution when this issue is right thank you very much for continuously supporting our channel please give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel engage with our videos comment down below share our videos with your friends and family so that it helps us rank higher in youtube's algorithm and in return we will continuously bring videos like this and answer all of your questions and show you the latest and greatest tesla accessories thank you very much we'll be back again soon